Yeah, well, this is Sherry Strong. Welcome to Unique Genius in 33. It is August 28th, 1130 Central, 1230 Eastern Time. And I am sitting in for Joe Self, who is normally our host. And so, and ironically, her plane has been delayed, and so she's on here listening. So the roles have been reversed this week. <laughs> Hello, Joe. Thank you for hopping on while you could. And uh, so welcome to this week's episode. I And what's really great about this is, you know, everything in the universe just gives you what, what you need. So evidently I needed a shot of this guy today. So, cause if you want to get uplifted and feel good, this is the guy you want to be around. So evidently I was uh, given the, I was he sent a message that I needed to be lifted up or something because when you get to hear him today, you'll see what we mean. Um, and it's just a pleasure to have him here today. So without further ado, his name is Michael Overby. Um, I'm going to let him introduce his title and who he is and what he does. And um, his top five, he'll tell you his top five talent themes. And just about even how you got started, you know, with this whole strengths language, if you will. But um, Michael, uh, and he, he goes by Mo. So his initials are Michael Overby. And I was given permission to call him Mo because that's how I know him. So um, I'm going to call him Mo from now on. And uh, so Mo, if you would, just go ahead and introduce yourself. Tell everybody about you, who you are, and what you do. And um, and let everybody know what your top five talent things are. Okay. Well, thanks, Sherry. I appreciate you having me on today. So my name is Michael Overby, and I am a general manager of a beer distributorship in Jackson, Tennessee. I've been at this location for 30 years. And uh, so my strengths, as we talk about them, you'll understand my path through this company and where I, where I am today. Uh, my top strengths are focus, strategic, achiever, futuristic, and responsibility. So that's kind of where we start, I guess. Yeah, yeah, and thank you. I love that focus, strategic, achiever, futuristic and responsibility. Oh, I love that combination. Okay, so now now you've got me thinking. I'm, I'm really excited now. So now, Mo, when did you get started on this path to the strengths language? Well, I met uh, Lori Ware about three years ago, and uh, as soon as I heard her presentation, immediately I was attracted to it. And my first thought was, how do I implement this in our company? and see what effects it would have. And then I was able to meet you uh, about a year and a half ago and develop a relationship. And I've just been intrigued with this whole philosophy and we have implemented it in our company over a two year span. And we continue to, to try to find new ways to implement it. And uh, the strength uh, genius aspect is just really strong culture in our organization right now. Oh, thank you for that. And yes, it has been so fun. And I love what you've done. We are not going to talk about too much of that. I know today because today is all about you and which is kind of opposite, right? Because we're always talking about your team and your employees. And hopefully they'll watch this as well when we send it out in the to the top Tuesday in a couple of weeks. But I will say this, your team and just what you've done with them. It is fun because even when we come to town and we'll see uh, some of your drivers out and about, you know, and they're, they wave and they say hi and they talk about how it's changed their life, not just at work, but at home. And I know that is a big part of who you are is that you want to develop your people, but you want to know that you care about them as a whole person. And I, for me, when I think of that, as far as a leader goes, and taking something and implementing it in the culture of where you are, it starts with your heart first. You know, people want to know how much you care before they know, want to know how much you know. And I think you exemplify that cliche, if you will, because when we see them out and about your team members, that's what they'll say. And they'll say, man, it really helped me with my spouse. Or now I understand why my teenager is this way and why I butt heads with them. And, and they have you to thank for that. So uh, there's your futuristic, being able to see into the future and what that means. So, and taking it from a positive place. So I just wanna thank you for, on behalf of them for what you do, Mo. 
Well, I appreciate it, but now everyone sees why I like you and Lori, because you make my head so big. You blow it up every time. You're contagious. How can you not perform that way with the expectations you put on everyone? Oh, well, hey, you know, we always say it's easier to work with people who understand why we do than trying to convince them why they should. So we have all come together. Well, so here's the talent theme that we're going to talk about this week. It is focus. It is your number one talent theme. And just to remind everybody, our, when we say number one, it's kind of that it, all talents are a natural way of thinking. And that's what we do. Like we cannot not think this way. But when you have your top five, especially your number one, you really cannot not think that way. So he, I like to use the word leads with, like he leads with the talent focus. And we're going to talk today about how it's been a strength for him, because remember, it's only a strength if it's used productively for you and those around you, those around you. So it's raw talent unless we're using it productively, but we cannot not think this way. So today's focus of the day, the talent theme is focus. So with that, my first question is, Mo, what do you love most about this talent theme, focus? Well, I like to plan. I like to look at end results. I like to have a goal to achieve. And so focus, in my, I can see that being my number one strength because I use it to naturally because I do like planning. I like to reach a goal. When I see and hear, hey, here's the goal, here's the plan, then I just, I can tell that my focus sets in and I can just already find this path to get there and just understand that I'm not going to stop until I finish that goal or that plan. Whether it's successful or it's unsuccessful, I've got to find closure of an opportunity of a plan that's been put in place. Yeah. And so that's one of the ways I use focus is I just, I feel like I can get a lot done in a day's time by having a focus as my natural deal. And other people see me as that kind of person. He tries to accomplish a lot in a day or a lot in a week or a lot in a month because that focus allows me to, to do that, you know? Yeah. So if I'm hearing you correctly, it's about having, my husband was in the military and he always says, you don't aim at the target. And he was a sniper in the military. You don't aim at the target. You aim at the fly on the target. That's what I'm hearing, right? Like focus is you're able to see that fly on that target and then aim at it and then go for it. Is that? Yeah, that's exactly right. And, and it, it keeps you disciplined end of you know because you do see something as focused as that fly then you stay focused in that and you don't you know i'm not distracted very much and so, I'm right. has anybody ever said you have tunnel vision a lot of times and that, <laughs> that, that gets back to the 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 rut you can get in you know uh, -huh. uh some people can see you as you know, you're unattentive or you're not listening to their ideas because you still, you know, I have a tendency to say, okay, but that's going to steer me away from this plan to get to the end goal. And sometimes it can be perceived a little, you know, as distractive. Yeah. Yeah. And I can hear, and it's interesting. This is why we always ask what your top five are. And part of this, you know, the unique genius in 33 is, and before, as we were talking before the recording started, is it's really to help people understand that it, no theme stands alone. It's how they all work together. And that's what makes us that one in 33 million people. So there's not two ways of doing something. There's over 33 million ways to do something. And so because of how your show up, I can hear your focus is your driver and boy, but I can hear the strategic, that's the plan, right? And then your achiever, I'm gonna get it done. Those three together, right? I mean, that is what makes you a unique, awesome genius. Yeah. And then you can hear it when you talk, right? <laughs> Have you ever told you been a, you're a unique genius since we saw you last? Yeah, and I'll tell you something else, is some people say, I'm not a real good listener all the time. Uh -huh. Because I'm, th I'm always thinking of maybe 
uh, of my response before I listen because I've got a plan to respond to your comment. Ah. So focus sometimes is, I love, I love to be able to accomplish goals and do the thing. But sometimes I think the perception of being too focused can be a negative. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Well, then that, that leads me to my next question. What does drive you crazy about having that talent focus? I would say in a nutshell, sense of urgency. So when you're focused, you feel like you, you kind of have a sense of urgency to get things done. And so when I'm talking to people that I need, because you can't accomplish everything on your own, you right. need your team, you need people around you, whether it's family, whether it's coworkers, you need people to help support you and get to, to, to the end plan or the end goal. But sense of urgency, mine seems to be elevated because I'm so focused. Where other people's sense of urgency may be like, they're enjoying the path to get to the end. Yeah, well, I'm ready to my I celebrate the end, you know, I celebrate the accomplishment where yeah. others celebrate the whole way to the accomplishment. And yeah. so the sense of urgency for me is, is kind of something that drives me crazy because I'm like, well, why aren't you as, you know, feeling that this should be prioritized like I do, you know? Yeah. And so to just be honest with people, I have to check myself because and understand that my sense of urgency of a, of a focused item may not be their sense of urgency. Right, right. I love that. And I love that self-awareness. Yeah. And again, I'm hearing that the focus, uh, uh, strategic and achiever, because achiever is about getting it done. Gallup, so some people don't know, and I don't know if you even knew this, Mo, used to show percentages, like on your top 34 or top five, like how much did you think that way? How much do you use it? But people got hung up on that and they would say, oh, you know, I use my focus way more than 8% of the time, you know, so they would get hung up on that. I bet if they would show percentages again, how much you leave with those top three even, I bet you they're pretty close, right? Even if it was 12, 12, 12 or, you know, 12, 11.5 and 10, because it sounds like they're pretty even woven in how you think. And you've learned that over time, right? I'm sure you've learned how to make the way you think work, but that's why it drives you crazy, I know. It's kind of, um, as Lori always says, we go in and it's our own sense of common sense, right? <laughs> What's common sense to us is not so common to other people, and it's like, duh, you know? <laughs> and I struggle with that too, right? I used to, especially in my early corporate years, would struggle with seeing people as lazy, right? You know, because, and not because they didn't work, but because I, I look back now, they were working, but they didn't have the same sense of urgency as I did. And because I was immature in my thought processes, you know, I just would see them as a little bit lazy. Now I realize that's not the case, but man, you know, I think a lot of people have that, right? That drives them crazy. What makes us good is what, irritates us about other people because you know what's what makes us good <laughs> right <That's> it. <laughs> they, why don't they have that <laughs> totally appreciate that so then I, let me ask you this question when like I can remember the first time I used my strategic I mean I, I mean I used it before this but I remember like being in high school remembering how I learned how to sneak out even though my dad <laughs> stopped me from sneaking out right I was like man I've been using my strategic my whole life and I, I didn't refine it until like a few years ago and my husband may disagree with that but, <laughs> but you know when's the earliest time you could think of that you knew you know utilizing that talent focus well thinking back about you know something like that I, I, I realized that early in my life, I was using it unconsciously. And so I, go, I come from a sports background. So all growing up, it was about athletics to me. And so when I look back and think about the focus theme that I have and my natural strength of focus, I think back to when I was, you know, uh, on sports teams, like in, you know, when I was nine and 10 years old and stuff. And I was always, uh, trying to be better than everyone else on the team and I was willing to stay there and take more do more, do the same thing more often ah. and longer. 
so I could practice longer. I could stay focused longer. I could do things that other kids my age wasn't willing to do because they would get bored with it or they would be ready to do something different. But until I could be the, the shortstop of the baseball team and feel that 99% of every ball hit to me, I, wa I was going to stay there and practice and practice and practice until I accomplished that goal from focus. And, it through, it, and I guess through sports and everything, uh, it, at a young age, I really go back and see that I was focused on all of the things that I like to do. You know, now, unfortunately, there were some things I just didn't like to do and I lost my focus. But the things that I enjoyed, I excelled at to a level that a lot of my, you know, friends and people did not. And I think that's the same thing with my job here. Uh, you know, I started at the very bottom entry level and been here 30 years. And I, I, I was focused on going through the chain and going through the steps to accomplish where I am today, which is leading this company. Yeah. And so the focus, it's, it's always been there through my, my life. I've just recently in the last three years realized how to make it even better. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think, you know, a lot of the things that I've done are I've, I've accomplished a lot of small successes because I've been able to focus to see it to the end, whether it was sports through high school, college, whatever, whether it was business related. Uh, at, at one time I was, you know, enjoyed just learning new things because I knew I could accomplish the, what I focused on. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That is such a great example. I would have never have thought about that for that theme that you were able, especially in your younger years, being able to um, stay with something, stay focused on something, and especially as a young adult or a child, as you said, where, you know, it's squirrel, 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 right? Oh, man, that, that, that was just powerful. That just hit me because you just wish we could teach every young person how to use their strengths to accomplish the same thing because it's not about what we do right it's not about sports or whatever it is but if you're in sports how do you use your focus how do you use your strategic how do you make it fun because then you want to do more of it to your point you learned that then you were like okay i know i can accomplish that by using by doing that but it came naturally to you and every single person can have that feeling of euphoria as well wow Sorry, I, I sound like I'm rambling, but I'm processing what you said. Well, even as, an, even as a career oriented, you know, my goal was for my family, but my, my focus was to provide for that goal for my family was how do I excel in my career because I love the business I'm in, you know. Okay. I never wanted to be in a different industry. I just wanted to be the best at this industry I could be, which again, focused me on in order to achieve the end goal for my family, I had to be the best I could be here. So you had to work harder. You have to put in more hours. You had to stay, understand how to get to the next spot and just basically be all in on, it, you know? Mm, I love it. I love it. I love it. Well, let me ask you this then. What do you wish others knew about, this focus? Uh, I guess one of the things is I just, I would ask people to understand I'm not insensitive on purpose if they feel like I'm too tunnel visioned or I'm too closed minded or I'm, you know, something. Because that's the biggest thing I wish others would know is that I believe in their plans as much as I do mine. I'm just always trying to figure out how to stay focused on getting that accomplished. Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes even at home with your family, you know, you, you know, they may say, well, I wish I had this. Well, then automatically I kick in with a focus. Let's get, it, you know, or let's do this or, you know, or, hey, why don't we go and, and do this? Well, I'm ready to go right now. Well, they want to go next week, you know. So sometimes I, I, I think the, the, the focus theme is, is perceived as unattentive or, you know, just in a negative sense. And I wish others wouldn't see it that way. I, I can totally see that. Um, I have a friend who has focus and has children 
And she tells me it's so easy to actually, you know, when they're all blah, 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 she can tune them out. And yeah, me too. Like, me too. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So you I mean, that's the that. thing. I tune out distractions, but other people don't see that as tuned out. They see it as rudeness, possibly, you yeah. know, or something. So. Now we yes. all know you don't even know how to be rude, but I get it. <laughs> but I, but she says the same thing. Like she can tune out things pretty simply, and that's what they see it as. Is are you listening to me? Did you hear me? Or like, no, I did not. No. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I'm not really, really good at multitasking. Yeah. And I'll, I'll just. I mean, that's one of the things. If you have a strong focus then multitasking is not as simple to you as it is other people because uh, you, you can't have three or four things going, even though you want to say you can, it's yeah. very hard to focus on multiple things when you're really truly focused on one particular. Thing. So like somebody who has adaptability high, they go with the flow and they just kind of can do that. That would be the contrast, if you will, focus, I'm thinking, you know what's coming to mind now is like, you know, the little clickers with the laser light, yeah. the laser light is right here. This is yeah. where we're looking. Now yeah. the laser light is here. That's where I'm looking. That's right. And that's what focus that's, is. Yeah. That's a good example. Okay. Cause that's, what's coming to mind as you talk. Okay. So let me ask you this. Who is a famous person that when, I mean, we don't, I wish we could give this to every single person, right? But who, who, when you think of focus, like you know it, like as it shows up for you, who is a famous person or, you know, in any realm that you feel probably has focus and why? Well, let me tell you the way I look at that question. Okay. okay. So, some people may understand this, but I'm going to go back to, to sports, okay? okay. So uh, everyone knows Peyton Manning is a good quarterback, okay? But Peyton Manning, what I see when I look at Peyton Manning is when he's on the field, he's playing good. But when he comes off the field, he goes and picks up an iPad, and he's focused on learning what to do when he goes back on the field. He doesn't even pay any attention to what's going on on the field with who's winning, what the defense is doing, what the fans are doing. He has uh, – his only focus is his job and running the quarterback of that team even when he's not on the field. So mm -hmm. he's prepared for it just like – I mean, probably no one else would prepare. That's what they say. But yeah. even after he's prepared, he's still focused on his performance, his leadership, and his desire to win that game on what he can control. And so I've always seen that when they show him on the bench reading the iPad. Uh, he's not paying attention to any other part of the game. He's focused on his particular job. And I, I think that's kind of the way I feel about myself. I, you know, I know what's going on around me, but I trust my other people are doing their job. I trust people are taking care of their responsibility, but I owe it to them to be focused on my responsibility and what I need to do. And so that's the way I kind of look at it is I, I feel the people around me are doing what I expect them to do or what is expected of them to do in the surrender. But I also think they hold me to that commitment to do what I'm focused on. Oh my gosh, what a great example. I mean, I, mean, I just think that is a great example because yeah, he's not paying attention to anything else. He, that's what he does. Now you've got me one, you've ch now I have this challenge that I want to go give Peyton Manning this assessment. <laughs> now, you want to have a little more fun yeah. know, for a fictional character or whatever? Then yeah. think of, when I think of focus, think of the karate kid, you know, uh -huh. when he blindfolded him and he had to do that famous move. Yeah. You know? Well, you can't, you have to be focused if you're going to be blindfolded and, you know, so yeah. from a movie perspective, you can find all kinds of ways that people have to really be focused to, to accomplish their goal. Oh, I love that. That's another good example. Absolutely. See, and again, because I don't come to life like you do, I can see it now that you're saying that. But I would not have made those correlations, right? Because again, my filter is different than your filter. But we have a couple minutes here. So um, I, I have a, I just have a couple of extra questions and I know I didn't send these to you, but 
when you are working with, um, let's just say new people, how do you use your focus to develop community, like relationships? Well, I have to control my focus. Okay. Because a lot of times when I'm meeting new people, then I have to turn my, tell myself to turn my focus towards that person. So I want to ask questions to make them tell me more about them because if we get, I want to be able to really use my focus to learn about who they are, what I think, what, what I see their strengths are from the first impression, you know, right. if they're a real talkative, outgoing person, then it kind of teaches me, okay, you need to focus on how you're going to use your strengths to communicate to this person, you know, right. and so um, I, I try to focus on the other person when I'm first developing a relationship or meeting them, uh, because I don't want it to be more about myself. And, and so you, you kind of have to focus the initial conversation to learn about that person, because as you see, a lot of my stuff is strategic execution, you know, responsibility and the focus, but it's not a lot of, you know, communication. It's not a lot of, yeah. it's not a lot of small talk, you know, right. I, I'm to the point, you know, and that's just yeah. who I am. And so I have to allow myself to focus on uh, uh, expanding that to the point mindset and yeah. letting them letting them have some small talk and 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 really in embracing that I could I could see how you've probably had to refine that I'm guessing and over the years I mean like we all I do still right? am. I still <laughs> am. right our biggest strengths are our biggest weakness and what makes us awesome if it's not refined, like raw and refined, right? If it's not refined, we'll take us down as well. Um, okay, I like that. So let me ask you this now. I've just got a curiosity question. You said earlier you can't multitask and do a lot of things, and you're aware of that. How do you manage that? Well, what I try to do is I prioritize a list, and then okay. I, I'm, I just basically put that execution thing to work achiever. Yeah. because I'll yeah the achiever because I'll just sit there and just check them off based on my focus priorities okay so I find I prioritize a lot and and okay. that helps me to focus and then get this done and I feel a sense of accomplishment and move it to the side and then get on the next one but in order to multitask in my world I don't look at it like doing it all at the same time I look at it like I'll work longer till I accomplish all of them Okay. Uh, yeah, that's focus. Step by step thing, which is the focus versus trying to do them all at the same time. Yeah, I can remember, um, and people who struggle, like, and I've coached people who are entrepreneurs, and of course, you know, managers and leaders, people who are, you know, they always have so many things they're sort of responsible for. Um, one of the things, or just a saying, I would often say, just in some, and I got taught this by somebody who was teaching me, right? Is that what if you quit trying to do 50 things by the end of the year, but you did one thing a week for 50 weeks, how, which one's going to allow you to get more done? More often than not, if we focus on one thing and do another thing and another thing, we'll get more done by the end of the year than trying to do 50 things, we end up with doing 10 to 12, and I think that's always the, the quandary for so many people, right? Is how do we get more done in less time and be productive and effective, but having that talent focus, even though there's a lot of things to do because you've learned to manage it, yeah, at the end of the year, you probably do get more things done than that person who's trying to do multiple things. I'm just well, kidding. Yeah, and I'll I've, I've, I've tell you one thing that I've learned is I'm actually accomplishing more in less time than most people because I'm focused on that and I'll do the very best job at this. And where I think I've got to stay 12 hours a day to get all this accomplished, I'm actually, like you're talking about, I'm doing focusing on less and accomplishing it quicker, and then I can actually accomplish more because of that. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Well, see how fast this went? <laughs> it goes so fast. Well, I I want to thank you for being here today, Mo. And here, what it what just real quickly, what would you say to anybody that may be considering bringing a strengths approach, strengths-based approach 
into their company, they're, they're not for profit, even their family or church. What would, what would you um, offer them of why maybe that would be a good decision? <laughs> well, I'll tell you, just a plug for that is because we, we I, I challenge myself, would it be beneficial for us to implement it into the culture of our company? And, and what it'll do is it will show you that you're using people's strengths disadvantagedly. You know, you're not using them to the maximum. So that's what I would say is you'll be, you'll get a sense of awareness about your, your team, about the, you know, your organization that you will quickly say, wow, this guy is really good or this lady is really good at this and I'm not, I'm underutilizing that. Mm -hmm. And then when you do show them that you're naturally good at this, then they're going to enjoy their job more. They're going to work harder for, for the ta for the team and it just comes naturally to them to keep doing it and so their job satisfaction improves mm -hmm. your performance improves and it's happened to me i yeah. mean once i realized my strengths were what they are and i've developed a way to try to keep refining them then i'm happier at everything yeah yeah, we're just happier at life, right? And when we're being our authentic selves. So, well, thank you, Mo. I know you have a busy, busy day ahead. We appreciate you taking time out to do this um, for all of the members of Strange Genius and the strong communities. And uh, and I'll, hopefully, I'll be seeing you soon. Yeah, I hope so. And you're a unique genius, Sherry. <laughs> you're a unique genius, Mo. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> See ya. Bye.